let me uh, start by thanking George Mason for hosting and, and uh, Frank for, uh, for putting this on tonight and Greg for, for moderating the event. Uh, you know, I grew up two blocks from where we stand today, and, and I remember uh, as a child the Metro opening. And I've seen the changes that have been brought to our community. Clarendon has been transformed. And in fact, the very center that we stand here because those who came before us were not afraid to make bold choices. And smart investments that gave us the community that we know today. Now we face a new set of challenges, overcrowded schools, a packed metro, and a regional economy dealing with federal cutbacks. People are looking for solutions. I am ready to lead, <coughs> bring our community together to deliver results. On the board, I'll use my business experience to be a strong voice for fiscal responsibility, just as I was on fiscal affairs, where I called for lower taxes, focused on efficiency, on maintaining parks and infrastructure, and on innovation. But fiscal responsibility means not only being good stewards of today's dollars, it means making wise investments in schools, transportation, and infrastructure. That's why I've laid out a plan to support our schools and call for a broadly inclusive public lands process to find win-win solutions to school overcrowding and affordable housing without sacrificing parks and open space. I propose that we have to improve the street part and respond to community input because we face a set of generational choices that will affect our community for decades to come. My record is one of bringing people together to find solutions. However, my opponent is focused on one narrow issue, on the street part. No matter that the funding is now secured, the state paying half the cost, or that there is a strong plan in place to protect 6,000 units of affordable housing. It's the same anti-transit sentiment that drove opposition to the Silver Line and the Metro in the 1960s. Even voted against funding for school construction, Metro and parks, just to make a political point. But political obstruction won't create new transportation solutions or strengthen our economy or create new jobs. That requires leadership. I look forward to your questions and the debate about the future of our community. Thank you.